Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1 course. This is Professor Onup Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering Department IIT Kharagpur. We are in the lecture of uh, fifth week module 5 and uh, we will see uh, how uh, the equilibrium equations are derived. We are in the discussion of theory of elasticity which is a uh, very very fundamental of uh, solid mechanics if we say. And we have uh, started in our la last lecture about um, definition of stress. In this lecture, uh, we will be considering the equilibrium condition. So, uh, equilibrium has to maintain uh, how mathematically we express the equilibrium in case of uh, structural analysis or solid mechanics that we will learn. Uh, without equilibrium, probably nothing exists. In, in case of our uh, analysis also, we will see how the stress gets connected with the equilibrium or external surface loads or body force. So, with that note, let us uh, proceed further. Uh, before we proceed further, as usual, what we need to consider is that what we have learned so far. Uh, in a quick way, we will say that uh, we have learned uh, a history of aircraft and uh, structural analysis. We have learned various types of external loads, conceptual structural details, flight envelope, load factor, shear and movement on wing and fuselage of an aircraft, truss, three dimensional truss, a space structure, dummy or unit load method we have considered. We have also learned uh, different energy methods to find out deflection. And then uh, we move forward, uh, we have already learned the definition of stress, how does it come and uh, here we will be considering the equilibrium equation in this lecture. So, uh, as we have already mentioned uh, that we will be learning equations of equilibrium or uh, in a different word if we say that uh, how the equilibrium is maintained uh, while a structure is loaded that we will see. And uh, as in the last lecture we have mentioned that uh, the uniform stress condition is a, is a very rare case. Uh, it is difficult to find out, uh, but uh, in the other case which is most uh, common that case uh, in a generalized manner is shown uh, in this particular slide. The particular slide consists uh, a huge thing on the figure, the figure what is shown here, this figure consists many things. So, we will describe, we will try to learn those things and uh, let us uh, see what are the things, how those things we need and how can we find out the equilibrium equation. Let us consider a cuboid element with dimensions d x, d y and d z. So, this is d x along the x, please may note that this length is d x, this is d x, this is d x, this is d x, d y and d z. Similarly, d y is this length as it is mentioned once here, d y dy dy or this is dy or dz dz is this length this length this length or this length now directly we are saying taking moment about the axis but before we take a moment about the as axis it is better to note that here what are the things shown in this cuboid this cuboid is not uh, similar to the last cuboid what we have seen in the last cuboid, 
in both the explains what was on the origin the plane on the origin this is the origin this is plane passing through the origin and this is a plane which is d x apart one more explain plane in the previous case we assume that since the stress considered was uniform in both the cases stresses were same, but in this particular case these are not same. As I have mentioned or we have observed that it is get it the stresses changes its value how? We do not know how does it change, but we can have a function which is a variable of x y z following that the sigma x or the all the 9 components of stresses changes its value. So, say in that all the stress components in the for the first example say sigma x x is a function of is a function of x y z. If it is a function of x y z for the increment along the length delta x, we can find a gradient and this gradient if we multiply by the length d x, this is the change for the length plane from this plane, the plane this plane to this plane for sigma x. Okay. Similarly, for the that is what is shown here, this component is shown here sigma x plus this component. Similarly, tau x y if we consider tau x y on the plane x acting on the y direction change in the x direction that is why we are considering derivative with respect to delta x partial derivative with respect to x and for the length delta x this is the total value of change of tau x y that is added to tau x y that gives us the value in this plane. Similarly, if we see this is delta tau x z del x del tau x z del x is the gradient and multiplied by delta x. So, similar way if we see this plane, this plane and this plane will always have some incremental value according to the position of the plane. That is the reason here all the three components are considered as partial derivative with respect to x multiplied by delta x, here partial derivative with respect to y multiplied by delta y, same. In this case partial derivative with delta z in multiplied by dz. So, all these three components we can see. Now, we have imbalance right, which is a common case most general case. Now, let us try to see whether all these 9 components what we have uh, given by sigma i j are different or they have some relation in between. So, to consider that uh, the first property what we will be trying to prove is the complementary stress equality. To do that what we need to do as it is mentioned here that we are taking a moment through the center of the element parallel to z axis. So, what is that parallel to z axis? We are considering one axis like this and 
we are considering moment of all the forces, this is the axis, better we increase that makes better visual representation. About this axis, we are considering moment. What are the co moment components will come? We have already discussed a moment in three dimension in one example while we were solving truss problems. Say let us start with the x plane. In this x plane, this will not have any component because it is passing through this, this will not have any component. Whereas, this, this is along the axis that is why it do not have any component. Whereas, this will have some component because the perpendicular distance from this to this and it is acting in the transverse direction to that axis. So, if that is having any comp ha have a, that is ha that is is having a component similarly in the other plane this also will have a component that is what is written here tau x y multiplied by this area, this area is delta y and delta z, this is delta y, this is delta z, this is the area. So, it becomes force. What is the momentum? That is delta x by 2, this is delta x by 2. So, that is the momentum. So, once we understand any com one component of this equation, we can understand all the components very easily that is the reason we are trying to do. So, this is a small mistake, this distance is not this one actually the distance is this, this distance, this is also delta x by so, for this component this delta x by 2 is acting this component. So, that component is written here tau x y plus incremental value area makes it force and this is the momentum. Okay. What else what other components will come this is about x plane fine. What will come from this z plane? nothing will come because this component, this component or this component or are acting in that same line. So, there will be no component coming from the z plane. Similarly, this, this, this will not have, have any component, but we will have a component from the y plane. This will have a component this will not have any component because it is along the line of that uh, axis what we are talking about there is no difference. This is also will not have any component because it is along this line whereas, this will have a component this one. So, tau y x similarly this will have a component tau y z. I think this is a mistake, this should be y x, this should be y z. So, in, in the other figures also probably it is there, we please uh, correct it. So, it is acting in the x direction, so it must be y x, it is in the y plane. So, please correct in the future one, if I remember I will also correct, it is a simple copy paste error, please ignore that. So, so, tau y x this tau y x multiplied by the area delta x delta z delta x delta z force and component as we have seen this is this component this is will come as delta y by 2 delta y by 2 and similarly, the minus will come later. Let us see the components first and similarly, this is the other, other component delta y x del tau y x del y 
del y area and this is the moment arm. Now, why it is positive and why it is negative? If we look at the components, this is acting in the positive uh, direction that means, uh, the right following the right hand screw system. So, it is rotating in following the right hand screw system. So, considering that as positive, these components are considered these components are considered as positive and the other one which is acting this way it is following the left hand screw system if you look at. So, that is the reason this is having negative direction. Now, let us move to the next slide this slide has already become very 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 dirty let us clean it and move it. So, please note that this is a small mistake you please ignore that and whatever corrected that value you can consider and proceed. So, the next slide this equation is repeated the first equation just to have a reminder as we have uh, pointed out earlier this is a small correction this is y x and this is y z. So, what happens uh, if we simplify this if we go for simplification uh, we have components these two half half will add up and give this component and we have the differential component separate where we have delta x square by 2. Similarly, here also we have that component this is half half makes it one and we have the other component. Now, what we can do divide this equation by del x del y del z or the volume of that cuboid and taking the limit del x del y approaches to 0. What we have is that if we if you do you can easily see that uh, uh, that tau x y is equals to tau y x. So, um, this considering the limit the remaining d x and d y this part will go to 0 and will these two will remain these t two are getting divided. So, that is not coming into picture you please solve it and you find that tau x y is equals to tau y x. So, what is happening three components are reducing from 9 we have 6 component of stresses. Because we can easily prove the same thing tau x z is equals to tau z x tau y z is equals to tau z y. So, that makes us that there are 6 components we see therefore, that a shear stress acting on a given plane tau x y tau x z or tau y z is always accompanied by an equal complementary shear stress of tau y x tau x z x tau z y acting on a plane perpendicular to the given plane and in the opposite sense. So, this is important point you should keep it in mind shear stress never comes alone it is always having a complementary part and uh, we need to consider that whenever we are doing any analysis. So, with this note we move forward for equilibrium condition. Oh, oh. Now, one more thing we need to establish that is the equilibrium condition. We need to establish now considering the equilibrium of the element in x direction. Here a new thing comes in that is the body force. Now, considering the equilibrium of the element in x direction including a body force component x acting in the positive x direction. Body force is the force which acts on the volume of the 
system. Here it is the structure. Uh, it is gravitation is a very very good example gravitational force is the very good example of body force electromagnetic force or some other forces may be visualized as body force. So, say if it is a body force is acting. So, inside uh, the structures with the stress components how the body force keeps the equilibrium that is what we need to establish and we will try to establish in mathematical equations form. So, to do that we are what we are doing it is same cuboid please consider these two corrections uh, better I do because I remember this is y x this is y z. So, we are considering the x direction sum of all forces equals to 0. Uh, here interesting point that uh, we will have uh, how many components? Uh, 6 components because in this plane there are 6 planes and each plane we have one x component force. So, uh, considering the normal one first that is sigma x x this is also subscript. sigma x x plus del sigma x del x d x this acting on the area this area minus this we are considering this way positive this way positive minus this this component similarly this will come x y del x y del y that means this component min minus this component this component always the area is considered to make it force stress to force and we have one more here this force tau x z del z this minus this. Now, since we are we have talked about the body force that is acting on the volume that is del x del y del z of intensity x we put it we make it to 0, it is in equilibrium, equilibrium has to be mentioned as we have done here. And if we simple observation uh, gives us the equation that del sigma is del x plus del tau x tau y x or x y del y plus tau, tau del tau z x or x z y del x del z plus x is equals to 0. So, considering the complementary stress property as I was mentioning that we generally say it in this form that partial derivative of normal stress and two shear stress components in y and z plane plus the body force is equals to 0. So, this is uh, considering on the on the x direction is not it this is considering x direction what about y? what about z? We will definitely have similar equation if we consider those directions equilibrium and we can write those without going into the same type of discussion that that similar equilibrium equations hold in all the three directions and we have the equations as mentioned here this is in the y direction. Please note that the normal stresses maintain the direction, normal stresses maintain the direction del sigma is del x del x. This is the other two del tau x y del y del tau x z del z. Similarly, this is del, del, del tau x y del x del sigma y y del y del sig, uh, tau y z del z this is y because this is y and similarly, this is z this is z and this this is not difficult to memorize uh, better you keep in mind these equation these equations are good equations uh, to remember and it helps in many many way in many situation if you go for further study 
The equations of equilibrium must be satisfied at all interior points in a deformable body under th a three dimensional force system. So, under three dimensional force system this is what we have. One more way it may be written that is most uh, popular to understand and that is generally followed in advanced books, but that is the reason unless it is introduced now it will be difficult for you to follow those that. So, the tensorial notation or index notation as we have already introduced to we need to do. This F i is a subscript please note it down this, this is subscript. So, what we write that sigma i j comma j plus F i is equals to 0 for i equals to 1 to 3 or x y z and j equals to 1 to 3 or x y z or as we have seen in the previous lecture i comma j equals to 1 to 3. So, there is a comma here what does that mean in index notation? There is a repetition of j here what does that mean in index notation? How this notation expresses these three equations at a time? This, this notation at a time expresses all these three equations that we need to note. So, if anyone says this actually he is talking about these three equations how? In this process if an index operator appears sorry index appears twice in it means summation and a comma j is twice here that is that that will yield these plus signs. This is and the comma means derivative with respect to that index comma j means this sigma i j is taken a partial derivative with respect to j. So, this since it, it is a comma j it is partial derivative that is the reason here it is say the first term if we talk about i equals to 1 j equals to 1 that gives me that del sigma 1 1 since comma is there del uh, x plus is there. So, that is the reason we have del then j will change keeping one constant j is changing what will happen del sigma 1 2 divided by del y better to say I think uh, I say it in x y that will make it easier to understand. del sigma x x this is x this is x y z like that del sigma del x plus del sigma x y del y second value of this plus del third one sigma x z divided by del z this plus x 1 this the first subscript remains same is that is the reason x here it is f i this is f i or f 1 is equals to 0. So, if I expand this similarly if we consider 2 next time and then again this 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 if we consider we get the second equation and similarly we can have the third equation also. So, that is the reason uh, that is the reason it is stated in this here in a different form. Uh, this is the way it is generally expressed sigma 1 1 with derivative 1 this is nothing but this 
this is this, this is this and this is this. So, with this uh, notation uh, we, we move forward to the next slide. Uh, in this scenario it is a good opportunity to introduce the plane stress. It is a special case uh, where of three dimensional uh, stress analysis. Most aircraft uh, structures com structural components are fabricated from thin metal sheets. So, that stresses across the thickness of the sheet are usually negligible. Assuming say that the z axis is in the direction of the thickness, what we can assume that sigma z equals to 0, tau x z equals to 0, tau y z equals to 0. So, if we sigma z z if we put all the z direction stresses equals to 0, this column vanishes as well as since this and this are the same this also vanishes. So, the remaining thing is that this 2 and this, this 2 and this. So, the stress cons consideration becomes tau I think this may be the first equation this is second or maybe the other way del sigma x x del x plus delta tau x y del y plus x is equals to 0 and the second equation is this one. So, again generally convention is to write this as the first equation, this as the second equation, but uh, while copy pasting it has reversed sorry uh, please note that. So, with that uh, the particular condition what we prevail in, in plane stress con condition is that the z direction stress components are 0 and that reduces the equilibrium equation in a simplified form. So, uh, the boundary condition continues, uh, we will be considering the bound, we have considered equations uh, with respect to the body forces inside uh, the structures, but we need to consider the equilibrium also if there are some surface forces acting. So, with respect to the surface forces, what are the things uh, equations we get and how do they look like? Uh, let us see, it is uh, not very difficult since the most difficult understanding in Q void all those stress distributions you have already come across. So, uh, with that we, we proceed further. Equations of equilibrium derived last uh, satisfy equilibrium uh, e sorry requirement of equilibrium at all points in the body or inside the body. Equilibrium must include equilibrium must be including the boundary of the body where surface forces are x bar, y bar and z bar. So, it has also to be mentioned or maintained in the surface and per unit area where the surface forces are x bar, y bar and z bar. If we have a triangular element at the boundary of a 2D body, then it is it looks like this. This particular portion uh, will be covering um, from two dimensional to three dimension. In some books, uh, it is it is started from a tetrahedral uh, from three dimensional consideration, but there are some lacuna. I don't want to mention those, but it is easy to understand and follow from the two dimension. So, what we are considering, uh, let us proceed, we are considering this element and that element in this is in a body uh, with a normal n and that element is simplified as shown here. And what we see in this element is uh, that a b is the boundary, a c c b the internal surface, this is inside the body this, this, this and this. And, uh, at a b the surface forces are x bar and y bar, x bar and y bar. At a c and c b internal stresses are acting that is since it is in x direction sigma x x tau x y is acting this way and in the y plane we have sigma y y and tau y x acting this way. 
x is given body force here it is not shown x multiplied by the volume is the body force this multiplied by the surface area this is the surface force. So, there are two types of forces we need to consider those we need to have an equilibrium. So, what we are trying to do we are considering similar way the summation of x equals to 0. So, if we consider summation of x equals to 0 uh, this as I said this is surface force delta s we are considering unit width on the transverse direction uh, on the on the depth side uh, of the element. So, d s remains uh, makes the area. So, x bar multiplied by d s this is acting this way sigma x d y is acting this way this one is acting here tau y x d x is acting in this direction and then the other body force coming here uh, that is capital X multiplied by half of del delta X delta Y is the volume unit width is considered that is the reason we say uh, in that tetrahedron derivation this part is not shown it is uh, said it may be done. So, what will happen let us see. The same equation is repeated in this slide uh, by taking the limit as delta x approaches 0 we can have that x bar this terms vanishes. So, that gives us that x bar is equals to actually this is becoming delta y by delta s then we are considering limit. So, we are considering a derivative or uh, we can say that that becomes the direction cosine. So, that direction cosine component comes this term vanishes because delta x tends to 0 approaches 0 and we have the body forces as x bar equals to sigma x x l plus tau y x m. So, this is for two dimension def definitely in the y direction we will can have from the y equals to 0 it's the same way that y bar is equals to tau x y l plus sigma y y m is equals to y bar. Similarly, for a three dimensional case we can have with the surface forces the equations sigma x sigma x y sigma x z l m n and here also similar to that there it was a derivative here it is only direction cosines are coming there is no derivative is considered and we have the equilibrium of uh, surface forces and in tensorial notation as we have described I would ask you to do this homework for the tensorial notation it is better to learn the tensorial notation or index notation j is repeated please note that is the reason plus sign has come 2 2 3 3 1 remains same j is changing. So, t 1 t 2 t 3 this again will come in a very different way in many times this equation will come we will use this equation many times. So, be better you memorize this equation this or this or this anyway is the most simple way to remember that whole equation we generally remember that. So, with that note uh, we move forward and uh, it is uh, similar the book references are same elasticity books uh, and uh, other books are used here. We have learned equilibrium from theory of elasticity point of view and uh, thank you uh, for attending this lecture.